How to Stop Jehovah's Witnesses This is the final part of a special series giving you direct questions for Jehovah's Witnesses. We've given you examples and documentation to reveal dangerous inconsistencies, mind control practices, and questionable beliefs. But what if you just want to stop Jehovah's Witnesses from coming to your door in the first place? Witnesses don't knock on your door by random chance. Your neighborhood is assigned to a congregation and divided into territories. These territories are printed on map cards and assigned to members of the congregation. A territory card is then issued to an individual publisher or a group. This facilitates more effective coverage and guards against too many publishers working in the same area at the same time. Depending on the size of your territory, witnesses may come knocking as often as once a month. But an unanswered door will not keep witnesses away. When no one answers a knock at your door, your address will be marked down on a house-to-house record. The first step is to make note of those who are not at home. This is especially important if you work your territory frequently. Witnesses will repeatedly come back trying to find you at home. Instead of hiding behind their doors, some people try posting no soliciting signs. This doesn't work either. Sometimes we come upon a sign prohibiting salesmen or solicitors. Since we are doing charitable religious work, that does not really apply to us. There are two effective ways to stop Jehovah's Witnesses from coming to your home. The first is to telephone the local congregation and ask to be put on the Do Not Call list. Confirm that you are speaking to an elder and that your address will be attached to the territory card. When we are working the territory, a householder may become visibly upset and emphatically insist that we do not call again. If he refuses to reason on the matter, we should comply with this request. A dated note should be placed in the territory envelope so that publishers working the territory in the future will avoid calling at that address. You may still receive a visit once a year, but it will be to confirm your request, not to convert you. The territory file should be reviewed once a year making a list of the homes where we have been advised not to call. Under the direction of the service overseer, some tactful, experienced publishers can be assigned to visit these homes. It could be explained that we are calling to inquire if the same householder still lives there. The second way is to post a no trespassing sign. It seems that Jehovah's Witnesses got into some legal trouble in 2004. In that year, all witnesses were informed If publishers call on a home or enter the grounds around a home where a no trespassing sign is located, they may be subject to criminal prosecution and resulting monetary sanctions and or incarceration. They also face being sued by the householder. This won't stop Jehovah's Witnesses from writing you letters or calling on the telephone, so it's best to just contact the congregation directly. If witnesses fail to heed your notice, contact law enforcement. You may be entitled to legal compensation for your trouble. The 2004 letter, Warning of No Trespassing Signs, effectively protects the corporations of Jehovah's Witnesses from legal action, instead placing all liability on individual members. Jehovah's Witnesses know your rights. Now you do too. Steps will now be taken to make certain that no further calls are made at your home by Jehovah's Witnesses. Watchtower Comments is produced by an active member of Jehovah's Witnesses. This video is not authorized or endorsed by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society.